Hello, I'm Dr. Basil Considine. I'm here from the ACU Online Writing Center, and today we're going to be talking about how to format an appendix in APA style. And we're going to be doing this through the guise of the guided team building assignment drawn from our nursing program. Because this is a very targeted webinar, we're going to skip past some of the normal introductory material about the Writing Center and the services that we have. Feel free to watch any of our videos that we have on our YouTube channel or on the Writing Center page to see that information, or you can pause this information and open the web pages that you see in the different slides. So today we're going to be looking first at the assignment that leads to this task, which is drawn from Nursing 655. And then we'll talk about the APA rules for formatting appendices. And then we'll look at how to actually, in practice, do the task of setting up an appendix that is required in this assignment. With no further ado, let's dive in and look at this assignment, which is coming from the Advanced Clinical Practice course, the week three assignment number one, creating an effective time, sorry, creating an effective team for policy development. <laughs> Two very different tasks. So the instructions begin with a little preamble talking about effective QI teams being multidisciplinary and having different areas of expertise, and that how you use that team is part of a project. Now using the policy developed in week one, you want to discuss the potential individuals in this workplace scenario who should be part of the policy update. So you should be discussing these people with your leader mentor and discuss or assign an individual to fit in each rule in the member matrix worksheet. And then we have this artifact to work with the QI team member matrix worksheet. And a note that after you have discussed with your uh, leader mentor that you want to discuss who is best suited to be on this team. And it's not a quote unquote real project in that you're having to do this specific thing. Although in the past we have had some students who were doing a bridge between their professional practice and the assignment and ended up proposing a team for an actual project they were doing, which if this is a case for you, more power to you. Now the instructions say to use the names of the team members and add titles as you can see fit along the top row to cover each of the six areas that you're going to be assigning. So don't use their full name, but initials for them. And then to check off the boxes that correspond to their expertise and add some people not already listed for their expertise and perspective. In addition to that, write a one page synopsis paper on why you chose those individuals on the matrix and why each of the areas they represent are important to successful creation, implementation, and evaluation of the policy. So one page synopsis, that's not something that people generally have trouble with. So we're going to be focused on the aspects with the matrix. And if we look at the rubric, it is basically walking through the things that we just looked at and just make sure that you have formatted the whole thing according to APA guidelines because that is 20% of the grade. All right, so let's talk about the APA formatting rules for appendices before we look at how to actually do that. First off, each appendix should start on a new page. It should begin with a title, which will be formatted using uh, APA level one heading rules, meaning it's going to be bold and it's going to be centered. It'll be in title case. If you have just one appendix, you have appendix colon and then the, the title text. And then if there's more than one appendix, you letter them as appendix A, appendix B, etc., sequentially according to the order that they appear. And that is normally also the order that they are cited in as well. Now, the interesting thing about the appendices is that because this is a way of including supplementary material, it does not need to require need to follow APA formatting rules aside from fitting within the one page page mar one inch page margins, and having the uh, start on a new page and having that heading text to title it as you know, appendix A, appendix B, etc. So you can embed images, and that in fact is the easiest, most straightforward way to handle the requirement here. And so I've included some instructions here, but I thought it might be helpful if we actually looked at this process. 
So let's go ahead and grab a copy of that form. Now, I happen to be using Apple's Preview or the Mac Preview program. You can do this in Adobe Acrobat, whether on a Windows computer or a Mac. The point is that you need to have something that can open and edit a PDF. Now, here we have the places where you'll put in the initials and the titles. And this might be a good point to revisit and look at the instructions for what should go there. So we have the initials and titles. OK. And let's go ahead and see, OK. Uh, we have JJ. <laughs> now, something that you may notice is that the text does not always appear when you're writing it in here. Uh, now, in this case, once I'm done, it gets compressed so that it'll all fit there. And you can do things with adding a line break to make it a little easier to read or adding multiple line breaks so that that is easier to read than just having the whole thing crammed into one little line. So in this case, let's say that this is KD and their title is going to be Evening Supervisor. Make sure you go and proofread that. All right. And you know, for the, the purposes of our example here, I'm just going to copy and paste and change the initials here because you'll be putting in things for the people in your proposed scenario. And these are just illustrative examples here. All right, now you'll want to go ahead and assign these people to the team, keeping in mind that you're probably not going to be having duplication between these. So let's say you're assigning these and say, okay, um, who will be working as the project sponsor? That's probably going to be one. <laughs> Process owner is, if it's the same person, then you check, check that. And we're just going to fill some things out here for the sake of having an example here. Now we have the what other expertise or perspective would you add? And let's say we have SL. And JE. And so we go ahead and put them in whatever areas they're going to be. Now, you probably shouldn't be checking these checkboxes here because these are the columns for A, B, and S, D. So make sure you don't do that and that you write in about their expertise. And we could say subject matter expertise. We could have say, um, institutional knowledge, whatever it is that you're going to be indicating. Now make sure that there's something allocated for everyone here. So looking at this, okay, might have several people with that particular expertise. So, all right, whatever we do, want to go ahead and save this and zoom out so you can see the whole thing. And in this case, I am going to be using the Mac shortcuts to take a crop screenshot. Windows, it's going to be press the Windows or Start key, Shift and S, and then do much as you see. In this case, I am taking this here, and it's automatically copied into the clipboard of my computer. So now I'm going to go ahead and open up a copy of our APA course paper template. So this happens to have some placeholder text. We're not going to worry about that now. What we want to do is to head over to the end of the references section, because whatever you have in the references section, you want to go to the end of that and go to insert break page break. You can press control enter on a Windows computer or command enter on a Mac, and that'll take you to a new page. And here we want to have the name of the appendix 
and that's going to be appendix colon followed by the name of the matrix itself. So the this happens to be uh, the QIT member matrix worksheet. And there's nothing wrong with a title like that that is informative. It may be dry. It's not terribly original, but it's informative, and that tells us what we need to do. Now, to style that, we have this in title case, so we also need to apply the style. In which case, it's going to be APA level 1. And you can see once I go to the Styles pane and select APA level 1, this all becomes bolded and centered. Next up, we have the screenshot that we need to go ahead and copy. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. And you'll see that if I paste this in here, it's a little bit large. It pushes off the heading text. So we end up with this blank page there. So what we want to do, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see this more easily. What we want to do is to resize it just a little bit so that it fits on that page. And so if I've selected the image, I can grab this corner and resize it just a little bit until it fits on the page here. You can also try cropping it to see if it that will be enough, but we want it to have this double space line break, which we do, and to fit on this one page, and we do. Uh, by the way, it's not a problem to have an appendix that spans more than one page, but it's not terribly helpful to have this whole first page just be the title and then blank space, so a little resizing creates a cleaner and more usable experience. So for, for this, for uh, our purposes, this is all we need for the appendix itself. Now, but if you're going to be referring to this worksheet and particularly to your um, worksheet results, then we can go ahead and talk about how you would cite and reference this. So if you're going to be referring to it, you can have text like as shown in the appendix or parentheses see appendix. That's fine. If we're going to be referring to the original worksheet, oh, and by the way, keep an eye out for, because this does um, ask that you turn things in at normal fresh quality. Make sure as you go on, if you see a typo, like here we see Institute for Health Care Improvement, well, the best thing to do is to fix that right away. And so that illustrates how to avoid a common issue with uh, the assignments where you say, oh, I'll get to that later. Well, usually the best time to do it is when you spotted it because it's already distracted you from whatever you're doing. And if you take care of it now, then it'll just be done. So if you're going to be citing the worksheet itself, not how you filled it out, but the worksheet itself, like to have a statement, oh, I used the... Institute for Healthcare Improvement and parentheses 2019 worksheet. That's fine. Uh, just follow the normal author date citation system. But if you're referring to what you filled out, just refer to as shown in the appendix or see appendix. In this case, the assignment has just one appendix. So that's why it's the appendix or see appendix. If it, you had more than one, you would refer to it as see appendix A, see appendix B, as shown in Appendix C, etc. Now, when it comes to doing the rest of the paper, make sure that you go back and write that one page synopsis. And the easiest, most direct way of uh, describing these people, besides, you know, a brief introduction to what you're doing, is to take them in the same order that you have the uh, roles listed. Oh, you've given JJ this rule because they bring uh, this skill or this history or whatever it is and tell us how each of them individually is important to whatever role that you've assigned to them and keeping in mind we have these criteria of successful creation, implementation, and evaluation of the policy and they may have more than one thing there. And with that I think it is time for us to wrap things up. So we have looked at how to format an appendix in APA style, given the specific requirements for this 
uh, assignment, including embedding the results of a the filling out the matrix. And if you have any questions, feel free to send us an email at onlinewritingcenter.acu.edu or schedule an appointment online through my.acu.edu. Have a great day.